thank you very much for the, uh, the warm welcome today. Thank you for the uh, beautiful drumming uh, and the smudging. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here on Treaty 6 territory. Uh, thank you for welcoming me here. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here with uh, so many friends, uh, old and new, uh, obviously here with uh, Ralph Goodell, our, uh, our Minister of Public Security and Safety, but uh, uh, also uh, so, many, uh, so many other friends and chiefs. Uh, I want to highlight that about uh, uh, we, uh, we got a message from Brad Trust, who uh, wasn't able to be here today, but sends his, his very best. He's at a citizenship ceremony this morning, but he, uh, uh, he, uh, he wishes everyone here their, their very best, as well as your local MP. Uh, and I'm just excited to be back uh, in such a wonderful school. Uh, for me, uh, the uh, extraordinary uh, school spirit and uh, success uh, that happens here at Oskayak is, is uh, a, a uh, example of uh, the kind of uh, things we need to be working on, uh, not just here in Saskatoon, but right across the country. Uh, it's uh, something that everyone, teachers, uh, staff, and students uh, should be very, very proud of, and I'm excited uh, to be able to uh, be here to take some of your questions. Um, the way uh, today's going to work is I'm going to uh, say a few words, then I'm going to take some questions, just a few questions from media, and then we're going to open up to all of you. Uh, I would love to take questions from students uh, to see what, uh, what's on your mind, what questions you have for, uh, uh, for me, for the federal government, um, concerns you have, issues. For me, uh, listening is every bit as much important as uh, speaking, if not more important. Uh, because the learning uh, and the understanding of your issues uh, helps me do my job. It's very similar to when I was a teacher. Uh, everyone thinks teachers are all about giving out answers and talking, but good teachers are all about listening, understanding, and empowering their students. And I know there's lots of uh, great examples of that here in this school. Uh, so uh, learning how to understand and empower uh, is at the center of being a teacher, but it's also, for me, at the center of being uh, a politician and, and uh, a prime minister. Uh, so I want to thank Principal Laliberté and all the teachers and students who gave me a tour today. Uh, we uh, got to see uh, a tremendous uh, example of the kinds of uh, forward-thinking initiatives that uh, do so well uh, in, uh, uh, in schools across the country, uh, a class that combined both uh, woodworking and uh, entrepreneurship skills and business skills uh, in a way that is really, really exciting. And I want to highlight uh, the uh, Martin Initiative, uh, Paul Martin, uh, former Prime Minister's Initiative, as rep represented by Lucy Santoro here today, uh, for the extraordinary work they're doing at uh, building success uh, with uh, Indigenous students across the country uh, so that uh, they can not, not just fully contribute to their communities uh, in the coming years and build strong families, but indeed uh, contribute in such concrete and real ways uh, to our entire country and the success that we can and must be building in the coming years because uh, giving uh, Indigenous students every opportunity to succeed isn't just about your communities and your future, it's also about the future of the country, uh, because the percentage and the proportion of uh, Indigenous students and, and young people uh, is so much greater uh, than uh, non-Indigenous in, in many ways. So this is exciting for me. Uh, making a connection uh, between uh, what you're learning here and what you're going to be able to use for the rest of your lives uh, is really important. And all too often, uh, education is, um, is seen as a necessary step that doesn't really have an impact uh, on the rest of your lives. And schools like Oskoyas, uh, uh, Oskayak uh, are, uh, are really uh, important uh, in uh, changing that narrative. And one of the things I was thinking of uh, as I was uh, you know, hearing the beautiful songs uh, sung this morning and uh, seeing the ceremonies and the pride and language and culture we have here. Uh, and it's something I'm starting to take, not for granted, but just understand is automatically a part of it. Whenever I uh, go meet with chiefs or, or young people or visit a, a healing center, a friendship center, or a, uh, an indigenous school, um, there's a wonderful celebration, drummers singing, um, we have to understand uh, that a generation or two ago, uh, it wasn't just that it wasn't done, it was, it was forbidden. You weren't allowed to celebrate your language and culture. 
You weren't allowed to take pride in your identity and your connection to the land, to the extraordinary history and stories uh, that make up such an important part of this country. Uh, and it was uh, largely the responsibility and the fault uh, of the federal government at the time. Uh, that's the legacy of residential schools. So uh, when we get to almost begin to take for granted the wonderful songs and the drumming and the culture and the, and the, and the stories that infuse uh, our communities now, um, we have to understand that this is an important uh, part of uh, the path forward that we are all on together uh, and one to be recognized and celebrated. Uh, and, and never taken for granted, as, as, as we know, uh, because um, you know, the elders uh, that we have around, it's wonderful to see, uh, see you here today, uh, remember well a time where this simply wasn't the case. Uh, and, and we need to continue uh, to work hard to ensure uh, that this sense of culture, identity, language, uh, is uh, built on and celebrated and indeed not just looked at as something for all of you but something that will infuse uh, the culture and the lives of everyone who lives in this land. Uh, everyone, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, uh, can benefit from uh, the, uh, the strength of identity uh, and, uh, and celebration that is shown here today. Um, so teachers, thank you. Thank you for the work you do uh, with your students. Thank you for your dedication. I uh, uh, spent uh, a number of years as a teacher, and I know well how uh, incredibly personally satisfying it is uh, to work with an extraordinary group of young people, but I also know uh, how incredibly challenging it can be. Uh, and uh, I know I, I speak for all the kids here when I say thank you for your dedication to this uh, extraordinary school and to these extraordinary students. In talking about teachers and staff and community leaders, it's uh, worthwhile to reflect on what the government's role is in all this. Um, what role could specifically the federal government uh, have in building a stronger future for all of these students and for our communities? Well, obviously, uh, as I said, government's first role is to listen. Personne ne comprend mieux les besoins des communautés autochtones que ceux qui vivent au sein de ces communautés. Et vous? Vous savez ce dont les jeunes ont besoin pour réussir. Si on ne vous écoute pas, on va tous être perdants. Je crois aussi que c'est la responsabilité du gouvernement de venir en aide à ceux qui ont été maltraités depuis trop longtemps, surtout lorsqu'il s'agit des populations autochtones. We need to invest in your future, because when you succeed, when Indigenous youth succeeds, Canada will succeed. That's why our government is investing $2.6 billion over five years to improve primary and secondary education on reserve. And it's why we're investing nearly $970 million more to repair, build, and maintain new schools on reserve. What I saw today in your school proves to me that it's a smart investment. And I can't wait to see how far this year's graduating class will go.